Hey there, it's McCabe from Kiss 108 in the Boston Duncan Music Lounge with the one and only Oliver Tree. What is popping? Love think, the hair. Thank you. I think we have the same barber. We have something going on here. Yeah. This is, I will say, this is my first day with the haircut, and um, it's a lot warmer than my normal haircut, which is not beautiful, luscious locks. What's like yours. the original hair? Uh, it's tiny little blonde hair. Wow. Yeah. Tiny. How tiny are we talking? Like, like that. Okay, it's nice. pretty small. So I'm imagining like spikes, like kind of like Bart Simpson or something. I have always wanted to do like the old school mohawk. Uh, what's stopping you? But my mom would never let me, and now I've kind of been like stuck with this basic hair. And I've been stuck with this, so that makes two. Okay, of us. so we were talking before we started here about the f- evolution of your beautiful hair. Right. We started with the bowl. Yeah. Which is a classic. You cannot go wrong. This came in. When did the this when did the, the locks? Bullet. This is the bullet. The combination. Oh yeah, so yeah. it's a mixture of a mullet with a bowl, bowl cut. cut. Oh yeah. So it's the bullet, and then I've had the bob haircut. Right. I also did the haircut where you shave the top part. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's and I've done the flat top mushroom cloud. Oh my the god. The opposite. Bowl I like cut. the one where you have an open space here because that must keep you nice and cool. Yeah, that's good right? for summertime. Yeah. Uh, but. It's it's more of a religious haircut. Yeah. So you have to be careful where you wear it. it what religion? Um, I believe it is big for the monks. Interesting. The, you know, oh. the bowl cut with the bald top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing for summer, though, and you can actually balance stuff on your head pretty nicely. <laughs> I feel like that's a talent of mine. When I was a kid, um, I don't know, we grew up in upstate New York, and we had, like, farm animals, so I would always carry shit on my head. And I think that's why it's flat now, if you notice that. Oh, I noticed random. a little <laughs> flat spot right right around right. there. Yeah, it's around there if you guys I have a see. flat spot too, if check it. I used we to carry all kinds of stuff. Person. I was going to say, I was looking <laughs> in the mirror, I was like, I started, I started getting this. It's I am adopted, fun fact, so it's wait, possible. I'm adopted dude. You're just saying that because you looked into my research. No, is that true? Yes, I'm adopted. From where? From upstate. New York, though. I don't know. Are you yeah. No. You're messing with me right now. No, this is Stop. insane. Stop. You're actually messing with this me. This is my brother. I don't want to say anything, but the resemblance is uncanny. It is. It really is. You were actually adopted? Yeah, I was actually adopted. I was actually adopted. For You're just th- saying that. No, no. This is real. No, this is real. And now here we are both today in beautiful Boston. This is crazy. You're here for different reasons. Obviously, you have a show at uh, MGM Music Hall at Fenway. Two shows. Two shows. I'm actually playing my first ever back-to-back. Each show is almost two hours long. Four hours back-to-back one night. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wait, so what, what's the division? What are the so two shows? So the first show is a mixture of a concert mm-hmm. with a live band orchestra mixed with a movie, a TV show, and a play. It's got motivational speaking, stand-up comedy, scooter stunts, WWE wrestling, karate, as well as some belly dancing. Wow. That's full 360 entertainment. I've worked on that show five yeah, years. Yeah. This is something that's been a labor of love. I've invested over $5 million into that show. It's a couple bucks. I don't own a house. I don't own anything. Well, you don't need I don't that. rent a yeah. house. All the money that I ever made went right into this show. So That's it's incredible. been a labor of love, and I don't even break even with this tour. So it's I consider, it, even though it costs money, it's a charity show. It is for the fans, right? Yes. It's all, all your money goes back to them in some way. So that's show one. Yeah. That is at the MGM Grand, is that what you said? MGM Music Hall at Fenway. Okay. It's the Sorry. longest name in the world, but it's a great venue. That venue. one is at the MGM yep. Music Hall. Mm-hmm. And then the one, and then I drive directly to a club. Yeah. And I play at the Grand. The Grand. Great club. And I am debuting the first ever Dr. Oliver Tree DJ set. And this is, to call it a DJ set, is completely a misnomer. This is an audio-visual experience. I've worked oh. over a year and a half on the mix side, the audio. Yeah. And I've been editing 15 hours a day on the actual visual side. This show is so groundbreaking for an electronic DJ show. I'm so excited to debut this here in my hometown. I don't know if you know this, but I actually have roots in Boston. What are the roots? So, well, I grew up here till I was six. So, Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know if you're aware of this, but basically that's that why I decided. before the adoption. No, I was adopted, and okay. then I, was, I lived in New York for the first year. Right, right, right. But I was adopted there in New York. Yeah. But I was actually born right here in Boston. That's really I beautiful. lived in New York the first show. year, and then I came to Boston from two to five, and then basically 
five and a half, I moved to California. Wow. But I decided to debut this double header show, and the DJ sh- the the DJ set is something so 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 passionate for me. I'm just yeah. I I DJed in high school. I played show for my last show when I was 17. I opened up for Skrillex. Is, is this going to be the f- like return? The return was in Antarctica. Oh shit! I played three DJ sets there, but yeah. this is the first audio visual show. I just did live DJ sets there. Now I am bringing the visual component, which is way it's like fully on steroids, juiced up. I like feel I feel a little nervous for you. Um, Are you nervous going into the first no. visual show? You're no. so you've been preparing for This is the seventh audio visual show I've ever made. So this yeah. is it's something that I have a passion for. That's exciting. But I'm very excited to debut it here in my hometown. See, I was gonna go to the regular show, now I have to go to both. Well, I That's have to say, sell. I'm actually much more excited about the second show. <laughs> really? Because I've been working on the other one for five years, so yeah, this yeah, yeah. is like much more fresh, and I get to finally show people what I've been making. But I think it's a mixture of DJing and performance art, and I have taken everything I've loved from nostalgia, whether that's music in cinema, and I've edited it, edited it down to smithereens, every single magical moment that I have fallen in love with sonically and visually over the last... 30 years of my existence yeah. is combined into this show. And so it's like I pre-edited every single song. It's chopped up beyond oblivion. So I have been producing it. And in my project file, there's over 689 layers of audio combined. Have and a good then computer. S- some of this audio is chopped up like 50 different little layers on just one line. So just because there's the different layers doesn't mean that each layer is an edited as well, so it's been a huge labor of love. That's the beauty of sound. You can make anything come together that you and, want. And then I'm doing the same thing with the visual component. Yeah. And I was recently in a mocap suit, which is those suits they wear for movies with the white dots. And I not only was dancing and choreographing movements to the show, but also singing things so you can see not only me as a 3D version of myself as a surgeon and as a doctor, but also singing the songs while dancing, and I choreographed the moves so I can dance on stage while the visuals dance with me. And there's, it's a lot of stuff, but that's just like a little. Kind can of you see my brain exploding? It's hard for me to explain. I'm actually running yeah. on a very little amount of sleep, so I'm a little bit, I'm out of it. But like, for example, last night I went to bed at nine and I woke up today at two in the morning so I could start editing. So I can, you know, I'm doing 17, 18 hour days of editing. It's really hardcore. That's dedication. Are you doing it specifically? for Boston? Will we see any Boston things for your hometown? Yes. Well, this show is the debut in Boston, but for both shows, there's some special guests. There's some very special things planned, and especially the first show with the band, we have a couple special guests. I saw on Instagram that somehow you got some very high-powered people in Hollywood to come out on stage. How did that happen? Who who, who came out? What can you say? I don't want to ruin it for everyone, but... but Robert Downey Jr. Right. He right. came out in Milan in Italy. He's a family friend, someone I grew up with. Yeah. I've had all kinds of crazy people come over the years. I fought a lot of people on stage. I fought Logan Paul one time. Um, didn't go that. as well <laughs> as I was wanting to, to but um, yeah, he kind of took me down, but I had security take him off me. Uh, you don't need him. Yeah, I've had a, a, yeah. quite an array of different interesting characters over the years, but... Uh, I got some really crazy ones for this Boston show. So I can't speak on who, and I don't want to give any hints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, if you do go to the first concert of the night, which is the live show with the band, that one has some really crazy special guests. Wow. I'm excited for this. Do you? Um, how do you get to these shows? I know you have a big history with scooters. Are you past the scooting, or do you? I had to stop. Are you scootering. still? You're, so oh, you had the injury, right? Yeah, I had it. In, yeah. Well, in, I don't want. I don't want to bring up something. I don't really like to talk yeah. about it, but Sorry. I will say this. For those of you listening who may not be aware, I used to yeah. be a professional scooter rider. Right. And um, in high school, I had an accident while I was competing in the pro circuit and broke both my wrists and my thumb, the joint that connects my thumb to my hand. And um, bad concussion. I've it's had healed, many They're com- both healing very well. Well, they're okay. It's hard for me to do much with this left arm. I've broken it many times. I've broken eight or nine bones um, growing up doing action sports. But anyways, I consider it what people call divine intervention, yeah. where it's out of your power and a higher power basically pushes your trajectory into a different direction. And 
when you get that much physical damage as a scooter rider, you yeah. kind of you have to start rethinking about potential longevity. And uh, and I had so many concussions that the doctor said if you keep scootering, there's a chance that the next time you get a concussion, that could be it. But you say it's the divine intervention. I mean, if you hadn't had that injury, do you think you would be doing these shows? I would not, no. Moving on to different genres and stuff like that. Would you be stuck in time? I don't know. I would love to be stuck in time. I would love to be stuck in this moment right now with you with oh, this haircut. I'm going to cry. That's adorable. If you want to be stuck in time, make sure you go see the show. It's uh, MGM Music Hall at Fenway Friday night. And then you're DJing at the Grand. That'll be a lot of fun. Oliver Treat, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Of course.